Our next speaker is Miranda Chang from Harvard University, and she'll be speaking about M24 K3 string theories and monsters, holographic visions. Um, can you hear me? Is it on? Okay. So uh, I'll start by thanking the organizers for an invitation, and uh, it's a pleasure to be able to speak here. And um, so in the past few days, we have heard a lot about the interaction about string theory and mass. But in particular, I think it's more about string theory and geometry, and not so much about string theory and, for instance, number theory. So that explains my choice of topic. And also, we have seen that uh, ADS-CFT has played a very, very important role in physics, but it hasn't played so much role in the interaction with uh, mathematics. So I decided to use, this, use my slots to present some work that might be a, a little step in filling this hole of uh, string mass landscape. And uh, so hence my title. And uh, before I start, I'll just give a very short summary for the orientation, like what, it's, what this is all about, more or less. The moonshine phenomenon describes an unexpected relation between sporadic groups and modular objects, as we know. And it has been one of the most exciting developments, arguably, in mathematics in the last century. And <laughs> yes, it's the last century now. We're in so, and uh, particular string theory has proven vital in the understanding so far in such a connection, for instance, in the most famous uh, monsters, Moonshine. And uh, actually, last year, a new uh, Moonshine with many actually very uh, novel features have been proposed. And this time, the sporadic group in question is the largest mature group, M24. And uh, we'll see how string theory, and not just CFT, but also non-perturbative string theory, uh, compatified on K3 ties various automorphic objects together with uh, conjectural um, M24 symmetry. And um, as I said, since we have t heard a lot about uh, geometry, so although there are many interesting geometric uh, aspects to this story, but I'll ma majorly skip them. So more focus on you know the automorphic forms and number theory aspects of the story. And uh, <coughs> finally, I want to argue that uh, we can demonstrate how ADS-CFT considerations provide natural explanations for some of the crucial properties of <coughs> the modular groups that appear in all the known uh, moonshine story. OK, so the outline of my talk is the following. I'll give a rather long uh, uh, introduction to uh, the relation between automorphic forms and string theory, and a shorter uh, overview of uh, just to remind you what sporadic groups are and what moonshine is. And then I'll uh, talk about uh, the relation between M24 and all kinds of automorphic forms that you get when you compatify type 2 string on K3. And uh, in the end, uh, I hope I'll have time to talk about some uh, work in progress with uh, uh, John Duncan on uh, the modularity. Uh, properties of the moonshines and why ADS-CFT, we argue, can help us to understand them. OK, um, so first, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, review part, automorphic forms in, in string theory. So string theory is very good at producing all kinds of mo automorphic forms. So because we have all kinds of symmetries that can be uh, realized in string theory, no matter whether it's Walsh symmetry or space-time symmetry, as long as it's a symmetry to the problem, if you have the, the appropriate counting object, then the symmetry should be realized. And um, so that's uh, fair enough. And then let's see some uh, interesting um, examples. The first example is just when you consider CFT, just a bosonic CFT, and you compute the partition function. And on the left-hand side, uh, you have uh, this is the definition in the Hamiltonian formalism. You're just basically, you have a, a Hilbert space, and then you want to count uh, the, the, your dimension of the Hilbert space. And you have a natural grading of your Hilbert space in CFT, which is given by the L0 of your Sorokon number. So uh, since it's chiral, I'll, I'll, I'll write the Hamiltonian as replacing the L0. And then from on the other hand, on the Lagrangian side, uh, you can write it, uh, your, your, pass, your, your partition function as a path integral. So you're summing maps from your, a torus with complex structure tau to some targets, 
So uh, where w it's the x of this where your uh, fields live. So from the <coughs> so from this consideration, you see that uh, on the left hand side you naturally get the Q series. On the right hand side, you naturally get something that is modular under SO2Z by definition. So that's w w that's how from CFD you can get a bunch of modular forms. For instance, the simplest example is just 24 uh, chiral bosons. And your partition function will just be given by the 1 over eta to the 24. So eta is the dedicated eta function. Then uh, this is uh, nothing but the partition function of the chiral half of the bosonic string because 24, 26 minus 2, which are the two Lycone directions, is 24. And because, and, 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 and so now let's remember that it's also the supersymmetric partition function of the heterotic string because uh, on the symmet supersymmetric side, everything is on the ground state. Okay, so let's move on to a slightly more complicated example when uh, we get not mock, mod, not the mock modular form, but uh, did I say mock? No, not the modular form, <laughs> 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 but the weak Jacobi form. Okay. So when you actually have a supersymmetric uh, super supersymmetric conformal field theory, so for instance, if you have n, com n equals two comma two uh, supersymmetry, then you have two copies of n equals two superconformal algebra. For instance, one example of such a conformal field theory would be uh, two D sigma models with a Calabi-Yau as a target space. Okay, so now you have a little bit more conserved currents, not just the Virasoro, but you also have the U1 currents. And you can use them to grade your Hilbert space with uh, a finer information. That's, how, that's why now we just, we not only get the Q series, but the Y series. And uh, an interesting object is the so-called elliptic genus. So basically you're, counting, you're computing the right moving Q uh, cohomology. Because if you look at the right moving side, it's nothing but the equation that Davida just wrote down counting the width and index. But the left moving side can be anything. Okay, so um, so one thing to keep in mind is that this n equals two superconformal algebra, the, the n, n equals two supersymmetry, basically uh, stems from the calarity of your target space. So if you have a hypercalar target, actually you will have n equals four superconformal algebra rather than n equals three, n equals two. So since we're talking about K three, that's going to be important later. Um, Okay, so as I said, uh, because before, as I said before, that these conformal field theory objects naturally have SO2Z invariance, but now we also have uh, actual invariance uh, because we have n equals 2 now superconformal algebra. So using these considerations, you can predict that uh, this elliptic genus that I just wrote down in the last slide is actually a weak Jacobi form of weight zero. What it means for our purpose is that they transform nicely under this Jacobi group and have the expansion uh, in this way of the QY expansion. In particular, the Fourier coefficients only depends on this particular combination of the two quantum numbers. Okay, so that's yet another automorphic form you easily get from conformal field theory. Um, but, uh, okay, we can get even more interesting non-trivial automorphic forms when we go beyond perturbative string and actually con consider non-perturbative uh, string theory. So uh, in order to uh, introduce that, that, let's have a little uh, interlude first. Okay, so let's consider some special uh, situation when your target space actually has some automorphism <coughs> group. I call it the big G. And then uh, when it is the case, then there are naturally two things you can do. The first thing is the following. Since uh, the target space has this symmetry, the Hilbert space should also has uh, this symmetry. In other words, your, Hilb your CFT Hilbert space now is actually a, a, a representation of your group G. So um, instead of just computing the dimensions of your Hilbert space graded by this uh, Q, Q gra graded by the Hamiltonian, you can now also comp compute the characters of your Hilbert space by inserting an extra an element of the group, just computing a the character of the representation. That's all you're doing. And uh, this is what we call the twisted partition function. And again, it has a simple uh, uh, expression in terms of the uh, path integral. Now you're just changing the boundary condition of your path integral in this way. Okay, so there are another thing you can do, which is you can con consider now orbifold CFT on this space. 
And uh, this orbifold CFP has the, the nice property that uh, its Hilbert space is decomposed into the, um, uh, in, in, in decomposed into Hilbert subspaces that are labeled by the conjugacy classes of your group. This is because, well, if, you, if we just consider a loop space of this, uh, then it naturally decomposes in this way with this kind of boundary condition. While phi is the, uh, what phi is the map from S1 to the original uh, target space X. So you can also compute now uh, the, tra the, the dimension of your Hilbert subspace in your orbifolded theory. Okay, so you can pick out uh, your Hilbert sus subspace, subspace labeled by its conjugacy class H and in this way. And it gives a twisted sector partition function, that's what we call it. And then again, it, has, it corresponds to a change of uh, boundary condition in this way. Okay, so that's a natural thing you can do when you actually have an automorphism of your target. And now one thing uh, about the automorphism property of these twisted guys is the following. Because again, from the torus picture, we know that when we actually uh, apply a SO2Z transformation, now we not only change the complex structure, we are also changing the boundary condition. So in general, they won't be uh, SO2Z invariant anymore, invariant anymore. They will be invariant under some other group I call it gamma G, okay? Okay, so now let's go to string theory beyond CFT. So to do that, okay, let's uh, think about, uh, take an example of uh, symmetric products. Uh, take, your product, take, take your target space now to be a symmetric product. And so now the group of automorphism will be just the permutation group. So uh, the Hilbert space is labeled by these uh, conjugacy classes, we call it the winding number. For instance, this picture shows a winding, num shows a winding number 2, 4, 3 in this picture. So just from this picture, you can see that the generating function of the elliptic genus of the CFT on uh, the n-symmetric products of your space can be written as a second quantized string partition function now with one more dimension in your compatibility manifold, okay? So uh, then from the second, from this definition, you can write down an explicit formula. So this is an explicit formula in terms of an infinite product. And uh, these exponents will be just given by the Fourier coefficient of your original single copy uh, elliptic genus. Okay, so um, yeah. So what does it have to do with automorphic forms? It has been shown that uh, these guys are actually almost automorphic. So this, uh, there you have to uh, multiply with some pro with some. Uh, with some small factors that is called the Hodge anomaly. It's called the Hodge anomaly because it's uh, determined purely by the Hodge numbers of your Calabi-Yau, okay? And, um, right, so in other words, you get from the data of, an, uh, of a weak Jacobi form or a, mo or, or a modular form in general, you get, it, you get from it something that is larger, that is automorphic under a much larger group Okay, so basically you're, you can think about it as adding a 1, 1, uh, 1 comma 1 unimodular lattice to your, to, your, to, to your story by further compatifying down. And um, so this is true for all uh, Calabi-Yau's. But uh, when your Calabi-Yau is K3, then this Hodge anomaly factor, this prefactor here, actually has a very nice uh, physical interpretation because then in that case, uh, this factor basically just corresponds to a further compatif compatifying down, so one more di dimension. So um, this <coughs> automorphic form, in other words, actually counts the, uh, the BPS index, wi which preserves the quarter BPS uh, supersymmetries in, the th in type two string on K3 times T2. So, um, so this is the expression here. And uh, yeah, and uh, just a, a comment here is that this automorphic form is one of the few that is actually extremely nice because it turns out that it's also a denominator of a generalized Katsumudi algebra. In other words, the su the, the, this automorphic form defines for you a, a generalized Katsumudi algebra because it has both a, 
uh, infinite sum expression and a non-infinite product expansion e expression. Uh, it's particularly nice because, well, the denominator of a generalized cut smoothie algebra is very often an automorphic form, but not another way around. So this is an automorphic form that is particularly nice from that point of view. Um, so not just, um, OK. So now, <laughs> let's just wrap up the story. Now, I, I, since I'm talking about type 2 on K3 times T2, and from uh, what we learned in the, in the past many years, including the talks of this morning, we know that, uh, well, quarter BPS states and half BPS states cannot be totally disconnected because we can have, um, we can have two center bound states of like each with uh, half BPS charges. And they can form a bound state which preserves quarter BPS. So you should also be able to find half BPS states uh, degeneracies in your quarter BBS states uh, counting formula. So this is indeed true because, OK, half BBS states in, in, in this theory uh, from the duality, as we said earlier, is, count is counted by nothing but 1 over eta to the 24, simple enough. And then uh, th these two center bound state BBS states can be uh, found in the partition function of quarter BBS states. Um, <coughs> by looking at the poles. And indeed, the poles behave in this way. And it reproduces for you the correct, uh, correct, correct index for, the, uh, for these two center bound states. OK, so to summarize my review, now we have this uh, web of automorphic, uh, aut automorphic objects by considering K3 compatified uh, string theory. OK, so here we start with the weak Jacobi form, which is the elliptic genus of K3. And we can lift it, and we get a bigger automorphic form, which has a physical interpretation as, as counting quarter BBS states. And then when we look at the poles, we get back the modular form, 1 over eta to the 24. So these are uh, connected in this way. OK, so now I'm going to switch gear. Unless there are questions, I'm going to talk about uh, sporadic groups. OK, so, um, so this is, of course, a review. So first of all, what are sporadic groups? There are, 24, t there are 26 finite simple groups that don't fall into um, infinite families. So in other words, they are sort of the misfits of, uh, of sporadic groups. I don't know if they're a fan of misfits in the audience, but, but I am. But <laughs> So uh, in this diagram, uh, this diagram is the subgroup structures of, um, of these 20, 20, 26 uh, sporadic groups. And there are two famous, two famous uh, misfits in this family. So one is uh, the biggest one that is the monster, because it's the biggest, and it contains the whole happy family here. Well, the happy family is actually a technical term, but believe me or not. <laughs> It's true, they are called the happy family. So, <laughs> so it's gigantic. The order is like 10 to the, of order 10 to the 54. And the other famous guy is the largest Matu group, which is called the M24. It's, I th it's, it's because these five Matu groups are actually the oldest in the family. So they are discovered in the, I think, um, 1830 something. OK, so. Um, Sometimes, occasionally, the misfits are actually uh, particularly pretty, as in this case it turns out. In this case, the, so these sporadic <coughs> groups uh, ha have the so-called enjoy the so-called moonshine phenomenon, which uh, is uh, refers to a relation between the sporadic group to modular objects. Uh, in particular, in more details, if you uh, pick out any conjugacy class of your sporadic group, you can associate with it some object that is modular. That's the general idea of a moonshine phenomenon. So now let's go through one simple example, since it's famous. OK, so the <laughs> it's not simple. <laughs> oh, it's not simple. OK, so let's go through some not simple example, because it's famous. And uh <laughs> so let's look at the Klein invariant, which has this uh, expansion. And uh, so, OK, fine. It's a Klein invariant. It's very nice. But uh, 
we then we have the so the most in, uh, the very famous McKay equation, which says one nine six eight eight four equals one plus one nine six eight eight three. So why is this <laughs> why is this equation so famous? Because uh, oops, because these numbers in red are actually also happen to be the uh, dimensions of the irreducible representations of the monster group. So uh, in other words, it is as if there, ha there exists an infinite dimensional m representation with a z grading such that uh, the n dimension uh, of each uh, vn is uh, also the Fourier coefficient of the Klein invariant. Well, this is extremely mysterious. So but let's uh, finish the conjecture. Okay. So if this is true, then we can, again, also compute the character of the representation, not just the dimensions. So there will, there will, there, there will be, uh, there, so we will get uh, some other um, Q series in this way for each uh, conjugate class of the monster. So they are called McKay-Thompson series. And um, so the, 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 the Moonshine conjecture says, that uh, all these guys are actually invariant under some Gina zero subgroup of SO2R. So Gina zero refers to the genus of the compactified uh, fundamental domain of your uh, modular group. Okay, so the big question is the following. So what, the, what do the sporadic groups have anything to do with uh, modular, modular forms? Because they, are, they belong to traditionally very different subjects. And uh, a partial answer, I won't call it a full answer, but the partial answer is given by conformal field theory. So um, it turns out that these, uh, these, uh, these representation of the monster is, is basically a Hilbert space or a, of a Cairo CFT with a monster symmetry. So <coughs> in particular, this Z grading <coughs> that we see is nothing but L0 eigenvalues of, uh, of, of, your, of your quantum states. And uh, these uh, McKay-Thompson series then have the interpretation of twisted partition function of your conformal field theory. In particular, the partition function itself is basically your J invariant. And it has been proven by Borchers by introducing the concept of generalized Katsumudi algebra and considering the automorphic lift of, uh, from these uh, modular forms, modular functions to uh, automorphic forms phi of G. And this lift, again, has the physical interpretation of uh, going beyond CFT and going to a non-perturbative, uh, going to a string, string theory, okay? And um, in other words, this is the paradigm of the moonshine phenomenon. You start with a sporadic group, and from the moonshine, you, you, you get to modular objects. And then from these modular objects, you can lift it to an optomorphic forms under some larger group. And uh, these automorphic forms would turn out to be the denominator formula for a certain generalized Katsumudi algebra. And the root system of this generalized Katsumudi algebra will have your sporadic group as a, as a symmetry. That's the paradigm, okay? So now, uh, after a long review, I think I can start uh, talking about M24. Okay, of course, this is still a review. Um, but Let's 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 get to the real uh, real uh, uh, real protagonist of the story. So the name M24 24 comes from the fact you can understand it by the fact that you can think about M24 as some subgroup of S24. So you're just permuting the group of permuting 24 objects. So in this representation associated to a conjugate class is also a frame shape in the following way. For instance, the I identity element. The frame shape is just 1 to the 24. It denotes a 24 set of elements with a 24 set with one element, so you're permuting basically nothing. And uh, there are two other two uh, conjugacy classes. One is has this frame shape, so it it has uh, it 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 it, leave, it leaves eight elements fixed while permuting the other 16 as eight pairs. And the other, the, the other one has no fixed point. It just permutes 12 pairs. 
Okay, so that's one way to to understand to to know have some idea about uh, the property of M24. The other one is uh, is uh, it's an automorphism of something, and there are 24 Niemeyer lattices as we know. So a Niemeyer lattice is something a lattice that's 24 dimensional, self-dual, even, and positive definite. And just like a uh, monster is uh, is a symmetry of the Leech lattice. And M24 is a symmetry of another less le less famous, so we don't have a name. We call it N, OK? Uh, another Niemeyer lattice. And uh, from this fact, actually, it has been shown quite a while ago that all automorphisms of uh, K3 surfaces prefer preserving the hypercalous structure actually are, have, to be, have to sit inside M24. So that's sort of a first hint of a relation between M24 and K3 surfaces. OK. So now let's talk about, uh, well, the d new developments. Let's see how much time I have. I have uh, 15 minutes, right? So a bit more than 15 minutes. So OK. Then I think I have to skip some things. So. Um, OK, so let's, let's just uh, look at uh, the elliptic genus. Start with the elliptic genus of uh, K3 surfaces. The, so the elliptic genus that we have talked about much earlier. Uh, so this elliptic genus has been computed a long time ago, and it has a very explicit uh, expression. And uh, we can also write, rewrite it in this way, OK, in this, in this, as the second line. So the motivation is very clear why we want to rewrite it in this way, because all these numbers are actually counting the number of n equals 4. OK, there's a typo here. n equals 4 superconformal algebra representations. Well, the idea is extremely clear, because as I said, the target is hypercalar, so we have n equals 4 uh, superconformal algebra. So the elliptic genus has to come in families uh, of uh, superconformal algebra representation characters. So um, so that's why when we want to know how many of the represent of a certain kind of representation there are, so we just decompose it in this way. So we get this Q series here that uh, encodes for us the number of n equals 4 representations with a certain quantum numbers that are in this appearing in this elliptic gene. OK, sorry. Uh, so this is a large sum. I didn't write down the the expression, but it's a, it's a, it's also a mock thing. Um, it's an upper large sum. Maybe you have seen it in with two parameters u and v, but this is u equals v. Okay, so it turns out that these uh, these uh, Q series encoding all the numbers of uh, of, of of massive n equals four representations, they are actually, uh, it is actually a weight half Mach modular form. So, so a Mach modular form is something that is almost a Mach, almost a modular form, but not quite. But uh, yes, that's all we need to know for this, for, for the purpose of this talk. And uh, so the amazing um, observations uh, made by these people, and uh, including someone here, <laughs> is that uh, these numbers are also actually dimensions of irrepre ir irreducible representations of N24. So again, the observation is that it is as if we have uh, M24 module K <coughs> such that uh, this Q series is doing nothing but counting the dimensions of uh, this module, this M24 module. So now we can do the same game. If this module actually exists, then again, we can also compute its characters, uh, not just the dimensions. Uh, so we can compute this guy. And then just as before, because it comes from a CFT uh, kind of consideration, so we expect it to transform under some group, some subgroup of SO2R as, again, a weight half Mach modular form. OK, so uh, that is sort of the logical consequence of the uh, assumed uh, existence of this M24 module in the elliptic genus of K, K3. OK, so the status is that uh, 
all these uh, mock modular forms indeed transforming under some subgroup have been proposed for all uh, the conjugacy classes of M24 last year. Okay, so um, so let's formulate it better. So the conjecture is that all these uh, way tough mock module forms that are uh, provided for you in the papers that I just cited on the last slide actually have some underlying uh, M24 module K of it. And, uh, and, uh, and it has passed many checks. One is just uh, by brute force constructing these, uh, these modules uh, for each grading. And the second one is uh, more geometrical, is that when this G actually generates an actual symmetry of your special K3 surface, then the whole Hilbert space has to be a G module, and you can actually compute the elliptic uh, genus, the twisted elliptic genus. And this computation has been done by these people, and then what they got indeed uh, coincides with what we got from just uh, modular, uh, modular form kind of computations. So, okay, all we need to know is that I bet with you that it's true, and uh, we can move on. And um, so, okay, I don't want to go into details here, so let me skip this and just tell you this. So, okay, so after that conjecture, which is basically the, the, the orange line here, so what I thought is, okay, I should complete the diagram of moonshines because since, and see if it falls into the paradigm, usual paradigm of moonshine, so using this using this orange as an assumption, so I could uh, do the other blue thing here. So indeed, uh, I know that there is already a generalized Katsumudi algebra for me, and then I, I can compute the twisted uh, <coughs> denominator assuming that uh, the moonshine holds, and then I can check that, uh, so this, this uh, Mach modular forms here, or the weak, weak Jacobi forms, if you want, in uh, in the twisted partition, twisted denominator phi of G, which are automorphic, are again related by a lift, and this consideration leads to new conjectures about new automorphic forms phi of G, and uh, a part of it. So this conjecture has been shown for some of the Gs, and for the rest, it's work in progress. So this is like kind of work uh, that has been done by uh, Clary and Grisenko and it ha it's being generalized to hopefully to uh, prove the automorphism properties of these twisted uh, denominators. And But we also have seen this uh, nice triangle of modular objects before uh, so we not only have weak Jacobi forms, in the triangle we have also seen the modular forms given by the eta functions and uh, so and, and these automorphic forms here. So if this moonshine is true, I could also extend that triangle to now not just uh, the, the old ones, but for a new one for each uh, conjugacy class. So, uh, sorry. So yes, so now I combine the two diagram in this way. So indeed, I have a set of uh, uh, modular forms given again by complicated expression or not so complicated expression of eta functions, and then uh, again they are related by to the new presumably automorphic forms by the with the pole condition, uh, which is um, which is uh, which is motivated by the physics of you know multicenter bound states of uh, uh, physics, and then. Uh, the, this yellow line is the second version of moonshine, which actually is proven, unlike the orange one, which is still now uh, a conjecture. So this is this summarizes the work uh, of myself and other other groups of last year, basically to complete this uh, it, this diagram, and uh, many bits uh, of it. Most most of it are still conjectures, so there's a lot to be proven and a lot to be learned about geometry. But now I'm going to talk about something else. Um, so now I'm going to talk about my uh, work in progress with um, John Duncan. Hopefully it's going to come out rather soon. And uh, 
OK, so first of all, I should tell you what is the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so in order to do that, I have to tell you in more detail what the Gina zero property of other moonshines are. So, um, so one thing to know is that Gina zero subgroups of uh, SO2R are rare. There are many subgroups of SO2R that are, you know, that are discrete and commensurable with SO2Z. So they <coughs> could, in principle, all show up as your uh, modular group for your twisted partition function and whatnot. But the observation is that they have to all be Gina zero. So it went back even before the moonshine. It went back to the famous Jack Daniel uh, uh, that is offered by a uh, Oak in 73. So what, it, what he did, what he observed is the following. So there's a particular kind of congruent subgroups of uh, which, which we'll call gamma zero p plus. So for any positive integer p, you can define such a group. And then they asked the following question. So what are the prime numbers p such that these kind of groups are genus zero? And the observation is this list of prime number is the same as the list of prime numbers that divides the order of monster. <coughs> so remember that the order of monster is that this 10 to the 54, a huge number. It seems quite a, rather striking that this list, these two lists are the same. So he offered a bottle of Jack Daniel for, to anyone who can explain that. And then there has been a sort of uh, an explanation by monstrous moonshine. Because uh, we know that the, uh, an essential part of the monster moonshine conjecture is that all the groups are genus zero. So then at least in, it implies that it has to be, you know, it has the, 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 the number p has, has to divide the order of the moonshine. OK, so this uh, genus zero property has been generalized to the so-called generalized moonshine and uh, other sporadic groups, the moonshine of other sporadic groups, and including something that has, that are not in the happy family, has nothing to do with monster. Okay, so um, so this is sort of a, a, a golden rule in moonshine, if, if you want. But why? I mean, still, it's rather mysterious why this is so. And uh, even worse, so um, after this uh, M24 business came along, so me and my friend, uh, me and my mathematician friend John Duncan decided to look at the Gina zero property <coughs> of this new moonshine. What we expected to find is that we would just compute the groups and look at the list and compare w and compute the genus, and then voila, they're all Gina zero. That's what we expected. But no, I mean, um, we, we actually didn't find any Gina zero property. We tried everything, like you know, ad adding etas and thetas, dividing, multiplying etas and thetas, but we never got the list that all the modular groups are Gina zero, so we concluded that it is not true just by inspecting, you know, this this these numbers we got. It's just not Gina zero, so it's heresy, but it's true. So um, so we we were completely stuck. So until uh, we, we 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 reminded ourselves that huh, at least some of us should know a little bit of physics and. <laughs> And as a modern string theorist, if you have a CFT problem you cannot solve, then the intuition, the reflex should be that then you just do ADS. So um, how, how does that work? So let's recall that the ADS, uh, now we have a CFT2. So it's a CFT2 and ADS3 correspondence. So um, let's recall that, well, in three dimensions, ADS gravity is extremely simple. So in particular, the set of points are all labeled by some uh, modular groups or s modular subgroups if you have some twisted boundary condition on the boundary. And uh, if this is true, OK, and if we assume that the CFT we, we care about has a semi-classical or semi-classical-like ADS gravity uh, formulation, then your partition function or twisted partition function and whatnot should also be uh, computed from the gravity side. And since the semi-classical uh, formulation, it should be um, computed uh, by the set of point approximation by summing over set of points. So in other words, your twisted partition function should, have, uh, should be Radomacher summable. A Radomacher sum is basically if you take some 
function of tau, and then you sum over the modular up uh, orbits and then regu regularize it and get something finite. And then that sh that's, that's uh, the idea of a Radomacher sum. And in, in the ADS CFT uh, context, it has been explored uh, in this paper before. And um, OK, so the Radomacher sum basically goes like this, as I said. So uh, if you take some function of tau, and then you just sum over the orbit. And this is manifestly invariant under gamma g. But the problem is, most of the time, it's just not convergent, so you have to regularize it. Okay. And uh, we define the concept of Radomacher summability by saying that you can find a, you can find a regularization scheme such that this, this Radomacher sum is convergent and is anomaly free. Because usually what you get is you get something convergent, but the regulator will break the symmetry. So you get on the right hand side something that is not, uh, not invariant on a gamma g anymore. So an, an, an example, famous example is uh, by Radomacher, you can write, rewrite the Klein invariant in this way. So you see there's a regularization here. And you have to subtract the contribution at uh, tau to uh, i infinity here at the cusp. And um, so the, OK, so now let's assume, let's step back and assume rather mark some ability of your partition function and see what kind of conditions you will get. And then the, the interesting thing is that for the cases that your partition function is a modular function, and uh, Radomacher sum mobility is uh, is if it holds if and only if your 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 group G is of genus zero. So um, okay, so that's a reasonable assumption with reasonable results that is compatible with other moonshine. So now let's look at our case. So in our case, our counting function is just not a, not a modular function. It's actually a weight half Mach modular form. So when the weight changes, the condition of Radomacher summability just changes. And uh, now the genus zero condition and the Radomacher sum condition just decouple with each other. So, so the left hand side doesn't uh, imply the right hand side anymore. And what we did was then, uh, OK, we just check whether these guys, instead of checking whether they are genus zero, we just check whether they are Radomacher summable. Indeed, using the, the results of um, other people, then we can show that all the lists we got can be re rewritten as a Radomacher sum. So this is the assumption. Uh, we, this, 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 is, this was the, a, the assumption we made from ADS-CFT, and then it passes uh, through all the checks, including an N24 case, and it covers if and only if, on the in if and only if basis, the known moonshine modularity condition. So to summarize, um, all the known moonshine theor moon theories of moonshine have a CFT origin, or vertex operator algebra origin, if you like. So if now we make the assumption that uh, that uh, such a theory has a dual description, then all our McKay-Thompson series have to be Radomacher summable. And uh, f for the modular function case, it, uh, it implies only if uh, gina, the, the modular group has genus zero. And in our case, we don't have modular functions. We have some other kind of modular objects. And we just, uh, and we just check that indeed all these mock modular forms can be rewritten as Radomacher sums. So I think uh, the Radomacher sum ability is a plausible replacement for genus zero, and it has a much better uh, physical origin. So maybe we can have some whiskey for uh, yeah. physicists instead. And then, uh, so, well, ADS-CFT has many use in all kinds of other fields. We have ADS-CMT, condensed matter theory. We have ADS-QCD. Maybe we should have some ADS number theory. <laughs> We're in the ADS math, and uh, thank you. Any questions? Both cases. So, so for the first case, case uh, the 
So, okay, the precise statement is, is the following. It's a little bit stronger than actually what I said. So, broad amount of summability for k equals 1 implies t naught 0, and t naught 0 implies broad amount of summability for all k. k is, you know, the central term. So you can you can imagine. So this has nothing to do. Let's talk about the monster thing. It has nothing to do with your value and so on. So you just take the the you know the 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 the, the, the symmetric product of the for instance, and you have a high symmetric product. And then the partition function has to be written to be written as a Radomir monster function. But and I mean, in quotation, on the standard you can say that you have all that. Yes, in that case, that's not so much of an assumption. You just call it some. So, no, essentially, I can take care of the hacking and how it's going to be. The general field will be of the general field of the reference. And the maximum mobility is the reference to carry over that you use as a general field. Right, exactly, yes. Yes, that is true. So, the general field of the maximum is the maximum sum of all only the reason. Yes, that's a general zero case. In the general zero case, that's the same.